So now that our paddles are moving, we need to start moving the ball. At the beginning of the game, we have our ball centered in the middle of the room. When the game starts, we should have it move off in a random direction, so that it's not predictable and gives both players equal opportunity to get the first bounce. So I'm going to close this and open up the object ball. And the first event we are going to add is a create event. The create event is just what it sounds like. When the ball is created in the room, then an action will trigger. Since the ball already exists, as soon as the room is open, that is when it will trigger. Now with the paddles we use the jump actions, but with the ball we're actually going to use the move actions, and we are going to use this first one, moved fixed. Drag that over. And we are going to select the four corner directions. When multiple directions are selected, the object will randomly select one and move in that direction. We also want to set the speed to 12. This time, we do not want to check relative. In this case, we are not adding or subtracting pixels fr from the object's position. Rather, we are giving it a constant speed of 12. So click OK. And we can go ahead and run the game now and see it in action. And there it goes and it continues going off the screen forever. Before we deal with bouncing off of the wall and keeping it in the room, let's slow down the ball so that as soon as the game opens, it doesn't just shoot off in a direction. It gives us a little bit of time. So when the object is created, instead of moving automatically, let's delete this, and instead we will set up a timer, which is in the tab Main 2, and it is this one, Set Alarm. Drag that over and we are going to set number of steps to 30 and alarm 0. Steps are basically like frames. They correspond to the speed or frame rate of our room. Our room is set to a speed of 30, which means that there are 30 frames or steps per second. So when we set the alarm to 30, we're basically setting the alarm to 1 second. So click OK. And we actually have to set up our alarm 0. We do that by going to Add Event, Alarm, select Alarm 0. Now when the alarm is triggered, then we'll have the ball move. So go back to Move, Moved Fixed, select those arrows again, Speed of 12, OK. So now basically what will happen is that when the ball is created, it will start the alarm at 30 steps. After 30 steps, or 1 second, it will then trigger the alarm, which will begin the movement. So let's see it. and there it goes. So it gives us just a little bit of time to see the ball and the playing field and get our bearings. Now let's deal with bouncing off the wall. Just like with the paddle, we go Add Event, Collision, Object Wall. Luckily, getting it to bounce is very easy. There's an action for it, and it's right over here on the Move tab in the Jump category, Bounce. Pull that over, then we get this little window and we have the parameters precise and against. According to the documentation, setting this to not precisely means that only horizontal and vertical surfaces will be treated correctly, whereas if we set this to precisely, then even slanted walls or curved walls will be dealt with and the bounce will be calculated. We can go ahead and set this to not precisely since our walls are only horizontal surfaces and they are solid, so we will set this to solid objects. Click OK. And before we test this, let's go ahead and set up something so that when the ball goes outside the room, it resets. And we do that by going to Add Event, Other, and we want Outside Room. So when the ball is outside the room, it will trigger. The first thing we need to do is make the ball stop. So we come back to Moved Fixed, drag that over, and this time we want to select the square in the middle which means that it will not go in any direction and we want the speed to go from 12 to 0. So set it to 0 and click OK. This will basically stop it in its tracks as soon as it goes outside the room. Then we want to come back over to the jump category and we want to find this jump to start. Pull that in. And there are no parameters here because basically what jump to start does is it takes the object and moves it back to its original position when it was created. So click OK. And then finally we need to get the object moving again. 
So what we're going to do is basically reset our timer. So go back to main two, select set alarm, set number of steps to 30, and keep it alarm zero. We will basically just reset the alarm and that already has the start move direction speed 12 that we set up earlier. So we can reuse our alarm. Okay, now let's go ahead and test this. And there it goes, bouncing off the wall, and every time it goes outside the room, it resets, resets the timer, and you can see it is going in a random direction every time. It does not, however, interact with the paddles yet, so let's set that up. Now you might think this is fairly straightforward. We can just go to Add Event, Collision, Object Player Blue, go back to our Move and Bounce. Not precisely. The paddle is not solid, so we want all objects. Click OK. And instead of making a new event for the orange, we can just right-click Object Player Blue, duplicate the event, go down to Collision, Player Orange, and it already has the bounce all objects in it. So let's see what happens when we test this. It seems to work at first, but there are a couple problems. For one thing, this isn't how Pong works, and you can see we just had a bug there where it passed through the paddle. That is because neither the ball nor the paddle are solid objects. So we get some really weird behavior. But in the original Pong, the ball did not bounce precisely like this, where it goes in the opposite direction when it collides. Rather, the ball would bounce off backwards and at different angles depending on where in the paddle it hit. So in the next video, we'll look at making a more complex bounce when the ball touches the paddles, and we'll also try and iron out some of those bugs.